Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Bangalore Tablet User Group with Priyanka from User AD and Angushi from Altus. So my name is Divya and I'm a Tablet Ambassador who has been helping the community for the past few years and it's been a great journey so far. So today I'll be your host. So let me walk you through a few housekeeping rules before we begin. So all the attendees are in, you know, muted. So in case if you have any questions, you can use the Q&A box and chat. The session will be recorded and a copy of the slides will be shared after today on the Tableau community. So if you have difficulty hearing, just please turn up the volume on the device you're using to dial in from or redial in. So as I said earlier, just keep using the Q&A chat icon box to drop your questions. You can also find the chat box at the bottom of your Zoom session. So you can use that to keep the conversations going. So to get started, maybe you know, let us know from which place you're tuning in from. So you can just drop the location and say hi to your fellow attendees to know better. So we host Bangalore Tableau user group on every quarter to meet like-minded data people and learn from each other. And yeah, yes, of course, to network and get to know our data fam better and stay connected with them. Myself, along with Kisley and Naveen, are co-leading this Bangalore Tableau user group. So a quick recap on our TUG. So far, we have hosted five meetups, and we had around 15 speakers discussing various interesting topics. And we also received registrations from 920 people. And today, we have like amazing speakers. Like I can say, like you know, I'm a big fan of their work. So it's a great pleasure to invite Priyanka Nanju for today's session. Also, we got some pretty interesting agenda for today. So it's going to be the first session is all about the visiting process. So Priyanka will be sharing her experience on how to vis and other tips and tricks, followed by Anjushri. She'll be taking us through custom styling the maps on Tableau. Followed by which we also have the Q&A uh, in the last 10 to 15 minutes. So you can start sharing your questions using the Q&A box. So it's time to welcome our first speaker, Priyanka. So let me give a brief intro about our speaker. Priyanka has been working in data analytics domain for over five years. She started her journey by using SAS to build Excel PDF reports, but later jumped into visual analytics using Tableau. She's a data enthusiast and loved to work on personal projects now and then. Currently, she's working as a technical lead at UserReady. So uh, if, if, if I want to share my views, it's like I, for quite some time, I've been following her work on Twitter and Tableau Public. She has some amazing portfolio on Tableau Public. So just make sure to check out her portfolio and just get inspired by all her amazing work. And with that, I'll be handing it over to Priyanka. Yeah. Yeah. The kind welcome. Share my screen. Yeah, sure. Uh, do you see my dashboard? Yeah, we can see. You can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and good morning, anyone joining from outside India. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, it's a big step for me because it's not something I usually do. So thank you for having me here. Uh, I would love to. Uh, jump in the session directly, but a little bit about myself, a <laughs> quick intro for just for your sake. So I, uh, my name is Priyanka, I am based in Bangalore, and I'm working with Usery for almost two years now, and it's been an amazing journey from all the tablet experience that I've gained from the company and from outside. It's, it's all my pleasure learning all these things. Uh, that is me, and this, if you have been following me on Twitter and LinkedIn, uh, you would have seen this photo already and this is, it's a funny story because this is my only good picture because I suck at good pictures, I always spoil them, but somehow this has been kept intact with my 
uh, <laughs> somehow something worked out and this is my only good one so far so i keep using this everywhere i can <laughs> so i i love watching sports i'm a tennis fan i listen to music all the time even when i'm when i'm working it's my background music that keeps me active during the day and i'm a high quota fan <laughs> it's it's my go to movie every few days so i almost know all the dialogues by now and all the scenes and even all the music that come up in the movie so that's that's me not to keep waiting let me try to jump into our main topic today so this is one of my favorite quote uh the reason i'm showing this up here is because i believe this strongly i believe passion drives our work and i was introduced to a term called passion project in my organization user ready and this has stayed with me so long because i have so many passion projects that keep coming up every now and then because i love working on them i think like if you have an understanding of something you should visit about that so that's my motto and to start with this uh, we would be talking about uh, some of the topics that i have out here i will start with my taboo first phase i want to show it because it's a uh, it's my first phase and it has some pleasant memories <laughs> and uh, post that i would share some uh, some of the activities that would help you get started in the community then moving ahead with my basic base process as in what how should you start with building, how should you start with building a base uh, importance of data gathering because uh, data is what drives your, your visualization if your data is not good, good enough then uh, you can't expect your visualization to do some magic all together so that's a very important step some of the basic design principles this is uh, this is just from my point of view i'm no designer or ui ux designer uh, it's all my learning from the community and from other people so i would just be sharing a couple of quick tricks quick uh, information and lastly uh, embrace a journey that's uh, that's a key ending point so i'll jump into that later so this is my first visualization when i joined uh, user ready uh, we were asked to build a project called passion project and i was sitting one day thinking about my passion and i was completely blank i had no clue what i should visit about and uh, i think back then there was a grand slam happening and i was watching a match with my dad who has always inspired me to watch sports with him so i was watching this match and suddenly it hit me that passion that's my passion tennis i could build a relation with tennis and that was my first step through the dashboard making process it was a amazing process i would say it's i know it's it's not that good but i somehow feel very nice about this dashboard always i've been thinking of doing a makeover of this wish but it's so it has such good memories that i don't want to spoil them and i hope that it be the same so so that i can remember from where i started and what made me work so much after having this passion done moving on to the next part so when i started uh, with my journey here i was pretty clueless to what should i try after my boot camp and uh, i came to know about this initiative called make or monday which is run by two uh, amazing people eva and back then andy so at that, at that time when andy was working on this and i started looking at this initiative and uh, it was pretty amazing people would build visualization on a data set both did but when i started building my own visualization i was completely blank because at that moment i had no idea how to build a visualization and about to post on the data so somehow i managed to finish my quiz and submit it but i was not satisfied and i was thinking of ways to build my profile and build my skills back then 
And that's when I came to know about this other industry called Workout Instinct, which requires you to replicate your dashboard, a bunch of calculations. I wouldn't, uh, I'm surprised I thought this back then that it's an easy thing, it's just replicating, right? But it was not, it's definitely not easy. It's so challenging that you have so many new tricks to learn. And uh, that was actually my starting point. I realized that uh, when I work on work or other things like this, I get more ideas to use from there to my own work dashboards. So I can't count the number of times I've actually done that, use some of the tricks from there in my own work. So uh, if you're starting it somewhere, this is the right place to do. It's all your technical skills that get, gets built up here. And I think... Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, can you just check your audio once? Uh, seems like there's some background noise. Uh, so it would be great if you can check the audio okay. once. Sure, sure. Just one second. Sure, yeah. Hey, did you have any video? Uh, I think it's the same. Okay, so meanwhile, uh, so we would like to hear from attendees, you know, maybe a simple question to all of uh, you. So you can just start sharing one of your most favorite future in Tableau in the chat window. Maybe to start with, my fa most favorite future in Tableau is, you know, level of detail calculations. That's like, you know, super cool future. That's like, yeah, pretty amazing. So yeah, even you guys can start sharing your views. Okay, we are seeing like so many cool responses, like parameter actions. Yeah, is animations are cool. Okay, this and tooltip. Hey Divya, is it better now? Sorry. Uh, I think it's better, but there's an echo. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, I tried connecting from a different laptop for audio. But I so, think it's, it's way better, Priyanka. I think you can go okay. ahead. Thank you. <laughs> I was feeling this issue. There's a laptop fan issue. Oh, sure. So. I, I was hoping this wouldn't happen today. <laughs> no issues. So I can just start sharing the screen. Sure. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, we can see the screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Sorry for the inconvenience here. Uh, I was on this slide. So yes. So these are the initiatives that I, I would encourage you to try on because the more you practice, the better you get. That's the mantra and <laughs> nobody gets perfect in a day. So 
keep participating in these activities and i'm sure you get much better experience after you do this uh while i was building this thing i realized uh, i want to check how many of uh, these projects have, have i participated in and turns out i have a lot of workouts and stuff even more than my personal projects which is what i was saying i actually totally love doing workout wednesdays they have such good challenges so that's my stats here uh moving ahead to the basic bis process so this is uh, something person i get i think this would vary from person to person but uh this is just what i feel is the way that you should try doing it uh normally i get an idea and then i search for the data so there are various free data places that you can check out uh, some of them have been listed here mm -hmm. and uh, if you don't get the data directly there are sites like wikipedia and uh, imdb uh, i mean if you're looking for movies and all there are a lot of other sites that you can check out where you can get the data and there's also a third way, way to get the data that is web scraping uh, it's a all different topic so i don't want to get into the depth of it, but I do have a video here that if you feel like checking out later on, uh, it would be helpful. So once you have the data ready, uh, there are some basic questions that you should ask uh, yourself and the data to understand how this, uh, how the data is. So first and foremost, check if the data is complete because sometimes data need not be complete for the year or some particular. period of time and you assume that the values are going down whereas the value is not complete because the year is not complete so always uh, focus on the data uh, range first that's very important check for different measures that are being used in the data or different dimensions used in data uh, check if there is any relation between them because they might be some relation that you can get from it and create a story out of it and there might be some outliers that you can focus on or uh, maybe find out what went with those outliers in the in the process of research uh, uh the next is research on topic so this uh, normally when i have to research on a topic i start with google that's your end after all right so google has everything you can search on articles you can search for infographics and uh, search for ideas in different places i think uh, some of the good ideas you can find in infographics because infographics have a really good way of showing things visually and i always check infographics when i'm building a bits because it kind of inspires me to try some new things so once you have a understanding of topic and you have the data ready uh start listing down the points that you want to show in the data uh, this could be the questions that you're trying to answer so maybe if you're seeing the super store data you want to see the sales uh, where the sales are maximum uh, or what product is sold the most so points like that help you understand uh, your analysis gets you a story in your data so that way you can drive your analysis based on the story you have and uh, and the last important step here is the wireframe which is uh, optional for sure but i like to sketch before i actually jump into my visualization uh, it could be a just a rough sketch in a paper or if i have some better ideas i use tools like adobe xd or figma to create a background or template that i can use in tablet it's uh, it's good enough but if you don't feel like doing that it can be skipped so this is completely optional and last is it's a main step you have to just base about it you just need to combine all your all your analysis that you did in the previous step and create the this so i was talking about how data is important so data is actually like this hidden iceberg that you see over here uh, 
I'm sure this visual has been predicted in many other places. Uh, so visualization is just a small chunk of iceberg, whereas your data is this huge iceberg between the inside the water. And that's very important because if your data is not clean or it's not complete, you won't have a good visualization. So make sure you work out your data first properly and then jump into visualization. In case you don't get the data, uh, don't shy away from creating one because uh, it's really fun. If you have your, if you create your own data, you learn a lot about the topic you're creating, build about, and it, it's really a fun process. Uh, while I was building this thing, I would want to check if I have anything like this done by me. So it turns out I have like 29 projects that have my own personal data. Uh, some of them web scraped from different sites and Wikipedia mostly. And uh, turns out two of them has uh, data manually collected by me. Like when I say manually, I actually watched a movie and uh, I noted down the data seconds by seconds uh, as much as possible and created this visualization for a movie called A Quiet Place, which had a, which was a, a movie about a creature that hunts when you have a sound. So the movie actually has very least amount of dialogues spoken out aloud. And I wanted to see if there's actually uh, dialogues coming up in the movie or not. So that's the reason I built this visualization. And this was the first time I actually collected data by just watching it and manually uh, creating it in the Excel. So basic design principles. So uh, like I said, I'm no designer here, but these are some of the basic knowledge I've gained in this time of uh, my uh, journey in Tabu. And uh, I would just be sharing some quick tricks and quick hacks. First and foremost, color, which is like the most important uh, part of visualization. <laughs> uh, I can't emphasize this enough when I say that color can change your whole visualization process. Uh, imagine seeing multiple colors on a visualization. It would get distracting what you actually have to see in the visualization when you have more than two colors. So it's always good to have uh, the least amount of colors used. Try focusing on a particular aspect and then color it, maybe like that. But uh, always, shy, always try avoiding multiple colors and uh, understand the meaning when you're using a color. So if you're using a color like red to show something which is positive, it would contradict your understanding of color because red has always been something a little strong and negative for all of us. And seeing it as a positive may not be the good idea. So that's something that should be kept in mind when you're building a visualization here. Uh, this is one of the examples I took from uh, a, a, a other tablet public person called Neera. She has a very wide range of amazing dashboards that you should definitely check out. She, uh, what I love about her work is that she always uses less amount of colors. She tries driving her in, uh, visualization using one color and that's what she has done over here. She see this red color harmful test file it's supposed to tell you that it's negative because it's harmful and she sticks to that color in the whole visualization. Just really uh, uh, simple but effective here. The same is applicable here for the gender gap. If you see this uh, term gender gap has been highlighted by Thomas and it's very clear that you have to just focus on this area to understand the gender gap. It doesn't have too much color. It's very straightforward and you don't have to spend too much time understanding the visualization. It's a quick look and you know that this is the gap here. When I was talking about meaning of color, I meant that each color has a different emotion that it conveys and it's very well shown by one of the uh, very famous person, Lindsay. She has built this dashboard on the meanings of color 
and uh, I personally have this in my favorites. I check it for understanding which color to use, and I would encourage you to check this out because that would help you understand when to use which color in your visualization. Uh, when it comes to font, I would say always go with something that is beautiful and web friendly. Uh, I know it's fun to use funky and artistic fonts, but it's a little hard to read in a visualization. So if you actually want to use something artistic and you think it goes with the theme, then try sticking to that only for the title because title can have something artistic, but if your whole visualization is with the same artistic font, it could be a little hard to read. And someone would actually have to spend longer reading the text than usual. So it's, it's, a, it's a very hard choice, but make sure you understand your uh, font before you use them in a visualization. If you have to have multiple fonts, uh, try replacing that with uh, maybe using bold or maybe changing the size. Don't, uh, don't go for multiple fonts because it, it can be confusing. And you may think that's not very really visible to people, but people notice that there are multiple fonts too, then it kind of gives a wrong impression that uh, you are kind of diverting from the theme of using so many fonts and in the same visualization. So uh, try minimizing that. So white space or negative space is something that says that your vision, your uh, visual or your visualization or anything should have some empty space around. Uh, when I started with my visualization journey, I thought everything should have been filled up to the limit, <laughs> which is funny. But later period of time, when I see saw people building visualization with empty spaces, with blanks and very wide length area, I realized that. Uh, it's, it's more like less is more. It's not like more is more because when you have more things on a visual, visual uh, dashboard, it kind of gets very clumsy and hard to read. This is uh, one of my own dashboard I took, for example, I couldn't find anything better here. So if you see, uh, it's nearly the same, but uh, this one has completely filled up the page. But when I added a little bit of padding, it kind of made, made it very cleaner to look compared comparison to this particular one. So it's just a minor change in the visualization, just adding a bit of padding, but it can do a lot of lot of uh, good to your visualization. So always make sure you have enough padding, empty space, and don't try to fill each and every corner of the visualization. Uh, coming to background, so this is very popular these days because a lot of us, even me, are trying to use tools like Ardo and Sigma to design their templates. And while it is good, I would uh, I would just uh, put this out there that uh, be sure you're using the correct template for the design. Sometimes uh, the background doesn't go with the theme and that could not go with your visualization. So understand your uh, theme and then read your templates. If you're using a background like an image, then always tone it down. Uh, when I say that, I mean that uh, your visualization should be the focus and not the image here. For example, in my uh, dashboard over here, I wanted to build this on a tennis legend, Caroline Wozniacki, who's, uh, who recently uh, announced a retirement from tennis. And I just wanted to be, have a dashboard for a tribute on her career so far. And I wanted to use this image, but somehow this image was so, uh, it was kind of uh, taking away the attention from my visual side of keeping the focus on her image, which was not the intention from my side. So I decided to add a couple of continues on top of it and adding kind of an opacity to make sure the image is there, but it's not my uh, end focus. People should be able to understand the text and charts before seeing the image. Uh, last and uh, the most important point that I wanted to say here is embrace your journey. I, I know when you see people build visualization that are so artistic and amazing that 
you would obviously have this thought this i totally do have this thought all the time that that the person is so amazing and i don't know if i can build something like that but the important part is that you are you are learning your way to the top uh, it takes different journey for each person to achieve the same uh, in the different time frame so it's not necessary if you have started and you just want to be something uh, perfect at a, at something so you basically have to earn your way practice all the way and don't just rush into things don't worry about what others are building just enjoy your way first if you don't have any ideas look for your own passion projects i i can guarantee you if you work on a passion project you would uh, feel more motivated against this compared to something that you get a data set again so always uh, take time get your own passion projects in place and uh, enjoy your journey uh, this is one of a base i just created a couple of days back and i just wanted to see how i have, I have been doing in my table and i got some good insights from this like uh, i have a lot of person for this coming up uh, in this covid time that i used to do it previously which could be because i have a lot of time on my plate and i can build these kind of visualizations so uh that's that's it from my side uh, i hope you had some good learning from this and uh, since this is the first presentation i hope you go easy on me <laughs> so thank you for uh, listening in thank you prinka thank you so much um, i think yeah like we really enjoyed this session and there were so many great tips even you know how to take care each and every small element which enhances the the final outcome of the visualization itself Okay, so let me sh start sharing my screen. And I really liked your last slide. You know, <laughs> like you know, just take some time. You know, don't rush into things and don't compare with others. That's that's like you know, like really motivating thing. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing that with us. So let's welcome our second speaker, Anju Shri. Uh, she is a data visualization and Tableau enthusiast. She enjoys combining business strategy with design best practices to build innovative dashboards. Currently, she works at Altus Group as a senior BA analyst, where she is responsible for creating dashboards for executive and clients in the real estate industry. Over to Anju Shri. Yeah. Good morning to uh, all the Bangaloreans, and uh, if someone has joined from, uh, I'm sorry. Good morning to others, and good evening to uh, Bangaloreans. Actually, um, let me just share my screen. Uh, Divya, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, we can see. You are good to go back. Yeah, great. Uh, so I work uh, currently at Altus Group as a senior BI analyst. Uh, I've been with Ernst and Young uh, before, and I've worked in uh, Bangalore before as well. I currently reside in Toronto. So I mainly work in the real estate and construction sector right now. Uh, so I love data visualization and data art mainly. And Tableau has become one of my go-to tools uh, this year, uh, I can say. And that's when I kind of joined Tableau Public uh, this March. And the journey has been good so far. Uh, I had uh, VOTDs uh, last month, uh, and I was also featured on the Wiz Gallery uh, in 2020 conference. Uh, in my free time, I'm just a doodler. So you can follow me on Twitter at that handle. Uh, this is going to be a hands-on session. So in case, uh, if you want to follow along with me, uh, you can go to my profile and you can download this book, Toronto Firewatch, so that uh, it kind of becomes easier for you to follow along. So I'll be doing uh, about how can you custom style your maps whether you, you are doing your business dashboards with a lot of maps or uh, infographics or your personal projects. Uh, I'm just going to touch base on a few techniques uh, just so you have an idea. Uh, the most uh, frequent questions are 
people have while using maps is how can I kind of restrict to one country or one city uh, without having the noise uh, around. So I'll touch base on that and just other elements to make it more beautiful. So uh, you can download this uh, workbook and do it uh, along with me. So I, I will kind of uh, brief on two ways that you can achieve uh, this one of filtering a country or a state. In this visualization, it's all about uh, Toronto and the fire hazards here. So you, if you can see in this map, I just have Toronto and the kind of uh, fires where they have taken place along the years, right? So I'll just go hop on to my workbook. So the first way, if you want to do it completely in Tableau and in an easy manner, is to have the shape files so that you can have your clean borders. Uh, so here I have just one city, but when you have it for states, it completely depends on what kind of uh, shape file you have and the boundaries. So use a shape file, go to your map layers, remove everything in your map layers. That way you have just a background image and just your shape file. So it gives you kind of a more customization and how you want to have your borders. You can even change your border colors in here and put a halo. So that kind of becomes uh, an easier way to do it. And the other way uh, is through Mapbox. So, <clears throat> okay, before I touch base on that. So sometimes uh, it's even necessary for you to probably uh, have scenarios where you don't want all the continents uh, on your map and just want to restrict to few. Uh, and you can't zoom in uh, and do the work around because they are still, part of it is still going to be here. If you just see uh, my leprosy iron, which it takes a bit of time to load. But in here, if you see, uh, I don't have the American part just because uh, I don't want that to be a highlight because I don't have any data to plot. All my top 10 countries are just within the three continents. So I, I achieved this removing by Mapbox. So I'll just show you how that's done. So I have done all my custom styling here. So this is the entire world in here. So what you have to do is first get your shape files for all the parts of the world. Uh, you can easily get it from Natural Earth, but uh, if you want to source it from any other website, please feel free to. And uh, you have to upload your shape file onto your Mapbox tile sets. Just make sure you have uh, the shape files in a zip folder, just so it can kind of pick up your address files and other files. So, uh, and you go on to layers. So, this is the shape file that I would be using. So you just uh, pull it in this way. It just takes a lot of time. So I'm going to delete this and I'll show you here. So once you're done, uh, this is how, so all the green parts are what you have. Now you have to filter out your continents that you want and apart from the ones that you don't want. So you go onto your filter, Okay, yeah, so on your style, you go on to style across your data range and you kind of add a condition. So here I'm choosing the column continent, but if you want to do a country, you can use the column name. It again depends if you want to filter it by province. Uh, you just pick the column that has that. And then here I'm saying I just want Asia, Africa, and South America, right? 
and then at the color whatever you give uh, it doesn't matter because we are decreasing the opacity to zero because that's what we want to kind of highlight so i'm just going to show you how it looks and i do it like this okay uh, just a minute let me yeah okay yes so this is how it's going to look uh, if you give it 100 but we want it to be highlighted so we go on a zero and then you will have something called as fallback value so this is something like your default values in other tools you would want to match this color with the background color that you have given or the background color of your dashboard so once this is done good go Uh, just a minute. Yes, uh, and then you kind of want to put in your water layers just because uh, there are some islands that won't kind of uh, get filtered on. So you can either put in a layer of water or you can again uh, get the shape files for water on uh, natural earth which you can get it and then place it on top of it so essentially what's happening is i have my water layer on top of the continents so that all the other continents are covered and now i have just the three continents with all my styling elements of hillshed or terrain whatever that you have a kind of style below that Another tip is make sure you match your background color of the map with the one your, of your background color of dashboard. So it, it kind of is more seamless that way. Okay, so this were two ways that you can kind of have a map and filter it down. So the next one, uh, I would say the border colors. So in case you use a shape file, you can easily create the borders in here and change the colors. But suppose uh, there's a time uh, when you have states that you want to highlight and you want those borders to be kind of in a bold, big black line and the other states probably on lighter colors. That customization, you can do it in Mapbox takes a while to uh, load. <clears throat> so here again, I have pulled in the shape file for Indian states. And uh, as you can see, I have different colors on different states. But when you go to stroke, you can see two different colors. So the ones that are in scope, I have a much uh, darker background going on as compared to other states. So you can always have such customizations uh, done in Mapbox as opposed to Tableau, which gives you just single color uh, all across through all the states. And coming to background colors, just going to hop on to another whiz now. So again, there are two ways to kind of uh, change your background colors for the map, one in Tableau and one in uh, Mapbox. So if you can see here, uh, my background color is like off-white, which matches my dashboard. So there are essentially two ways to do it. So if you, uh, but one criteria for you to know uh, when you're changing background uh, colors of the maps, you can't have your base layer. You, you just can't have it. Oh, you can do it only when you don't have any base layer. So you essentially just go to format, your fill, and you change the color in your paint. So I'm just putting some random colors. So it kind of changes your background map color. This is one way to do it. And the other way is in my box. I'll just show you. Uh, I'm just taking a blank map. You go on to layers, you add a layer, 
and convert this to your background layer and pick a color that you want. If you know a hex code, it's uh, all the more better. So this becomes your background color and it's quite easy to do and then you can customize it on your own. <clears throat> the other one is having shadows. I'll just show you here. Okay, so if you see this US map, you can see a slight shadow in here, kind of gives you uh, like an elevated view. You can also achieve this by designing it in Illustrator, but the easier way uh, to do it is in Mapbox. Okay, so this is how it will look. Uh, you kind of have like a grayed out area, which is giving you the 3D look. You can always increase the width so that it looks much higher. So I just have a basic black background and I have pulled in the same shape file of all the countries in here and have a filter on US. So for this one, you go into your style data. Usually it's always a default fill. Make sure you put it to the 3D polygon because we want to achieve this effect. And once you have just US, you again get the shape file and this time to get the elevated portion. So you add in the same way and you have just US in here and you have the 3D polygon. The only change that you make here is you're giving an elevation here. So I have about 90,000 meters. So I'll just bump another zero. And this is too much, uh, but you can see that it's kind of elevated. You can always turn it down. I'll probably up it. This will be much better. So that's how you can get the shadow effect easily uh, as opposed to do it in uh, Illustrator or any other design tool. You have uh, more flexibility here uh, to kind of uh, get your own elevation. The other way, um, other style you can also do is having like a, a, I don't know what kind of a design you call this, but having like 3D elevated map and then you plot your points on top of this. It's essentially uh, the same way, but it's just that uh, it's all about uh, how much is your base height, how much height you want to give and the elevation. And I've just added some color onto it. It need not be all this plain. You can also go ahead and put your terrain and hillshade uh, features onto it. So it looks uh, even more lively, but that's one option to do to get this kind of uh, elevation in here. See, the other tip I would give is uh, for your maps is use a lot of custom shapes. So if you see it in my viz here, uh, this is all about fire. So I didn't want like just small circles or anything very simple going on here. I really wanted uh, to kind of uh, it to pop up with the glow. So I've used a custom icon in here and almost every graph that this one has. And in here, I wanted to show the fire station. So I use a fire station custom icon. And in case if you're wondering, uh, how do I get this custom icons? You can uh, either build one uh, in any of the design uh, tool of your choice. Or in case you, if you wanted the same glow icon, there's a very easy way to kind of if you see it in anyone's workbook, it's very easy to kind of transfer it onto yours. So I'll just switch on to this workbook and show you. So in my shapes, I don't have the fire glow, right? So the easy way for you to copy it up is uh, you go on another sheet. Uh, just copy the sheet. and then paste it 
up in here. So now I go to my shapes. And you can see this glow now, right? Let me kind of uh, bump it up. So you have this custom icon in your workbook now and it goes into your shapes repository. Uh, you can save it later or... <clears throat> so that's uh, another tip. That's much easier to kind of uh, have your shapes taken up from another workbook. And the other one I wanted to show you is, there are a lot of use cases where we we want the maps to go under a circle or look something like this, especially when you're making infographics and things like that. Uh, it's not restricted to just circle. You can have pretty much uh, any shape in that way. So I'll just quickly show you how you can make it. I use Figma a lot uh, just because it's open source and very easy. But you can do this even in PowerPoint if you are familiar with or any other design tool. So suppose I wanted a circle, do it, and you give it a stroke of probably 100. Okay, yeah, and make sure you don't have any kind of fill in here. This has, this has to be transparent so that our map comes in here and this is our out layer. And this black color, it essentially has to match with your background color. So you have this kind of a donut in here, and then go to export, have a preview and export it. I'm not going to be exporting it, but uh, you again have different formats, so you can even do it as an SVG. If you wanna put in another image or uh, any kind of picture sometimes. So I'll go back here and just remove these and hide. Okay, so this is my map uh, that we use, used. So now I want to make it circular. So I go on to floating. I get that image on that I created in Figma right now. So this is the donut that we had. Uh, you have to essentially do, it takes a bit of time to get the right slicing. I just know the coordinates I'll just put in. Um, it's 129, T. One and 721. Okay, so now we have this uh, nice circle in here. But you might ask, uh, once I put the shape, now when I hover, I can't see anything that was on my tooltip or it's not giving me any analysis. So just for that, uh, let me unhide the worksheet. So this was the... <coughs> dashboard that we put it in, so duplicate it, and then go on to your map, map layers. You want to make sure that all your layers are gone. And because I have a background color, I want to make it transparent. And then these are the ones that we want to kind of fade off. So you go and make that as zero opacity. It is still there. You can see the tooltips going on. So essentially what you want to make here is place that on top of your graph here. So I go here and I get this one. Um, again, uh, I know my coordinates, it's much easier. So you have to make sure that you match the sizing of your new uh, graph that you've got to the previous map that you've put in. So I'm just going to match them up. 
96, 510, and 497. So now, as you can see, you have your tool tip back. So you don't lose that interactivity and it's inside a uh, circle. And again, you can use any kind of custom shape that you want. It's not restricted to just a circle. And even in case if you wanted a kind of a circular border as well going on, you can do that on Figma or any design uh, tool. As for that. And another tip, uh, this is a very small tip most of you would know, but still, uh, when people say fix your map, fix your map, uh, let me show it here. So you can kind of zoom in. Yes, it's good, but sometimes there are scenarios where you wouldn't want the user to zoom in. So you go in. Go to your maps, your map options and uncheck all of them. And now it's kind of fixed. The user cannot zoom in or zoom out. The specific use case uh, where such things could happen is when you're creating infographics and you've placed the map exactly uh, in the place where it's supposed to be. So if you see in this way, this is a Bahama Wiz. I want it to be placed exactly like this here. I can't, but if I let the user go like this, this is not looking good now, right? So these are some places where you would want to fix your map up because you don't want to ruin the design elements. So uh, yes, these were the tips that I had in mind uh, to custom style your maps uh, using map box and within tableau as well so in case you want to look at more maps uh, you can always take a look at my public profile it's the same name and the same picture all throughout uh, i think <laughs> so you can follow me or dm me on twitter uh, in case you want to reach out or have some questions i would be glad to help uh, people out on that front so thank you for having me today Thank you, Anushree. Oh, thank you, you so Divya. much. Thank you. So I, I think we just saw some mind-blowing work here and so many cool, you know, tips and tricks on maps. It's, it's like there's outstanding work, I can say. Okay, so with that, uh, we have Naveen from Bangalore TG team uh, who will be moderating the Q&A session. Uh, Over to you, Naveen. So, uh, Priyanka, this question is for you. Uh, is it preferable to use padding or blanks for having white and white space? Okay, um, I I normally uh, add a lot of blanks, <laughs> but if the if there's a outer padding that I want to do on a whole visualization, then I think padding is better. But in between spaces, uh, I generally use blanks. That's my way of doing it. But I think it's it works both ways. If you if you are more comfortable with paddings, then definitely padding is a more better way, and it's actually more efficient than using blanks. But it, it's personal choice, I guess. Okay. Uh, Kizli, uh, this question is for you. Uh, best way to clean and prepare data? What tools or methods are the best? Oh, this is for me, you said? Uh, Kizli, uh, sorry. Kizli. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the best way to clean and prepare data, Kizli? Which tools or which? Uh, so, most of data preparation is possible in Tableau Prep, I would say. Uh, but in case it's something very complex and your data size is huge, you can also look at tools like Alteryx. Uh, there are also some scripting tools like R and Python, which you can use. And if you're familiar with programming, that can be a much easier option as well. So I personally prefer R, but for work related stuff, we have things like Alteryx set up to do the data cleaning part. Uh, there is a question from Avanti. Uh, this is for you, Anju. Uh, how to plot unknown locations apart from conventional method? Uh, so I, I, it's not very clear in here. Like when you say unknown locations, is it when the Tableau does not uh, recognize the points that you put? Because 
the Tableau engine has a few locations, but you have to kind of tune Tableau to understand which country you're looking in or which state you're looking in. And that will uh, help you ease out half your problem. Okay. So adding to that, like, so whenever you select the geographical role, uh, there you can select a country or there you can select a state or ISO code, however you want, so that your unknown location will be resolved. So most most probably use the zip codes uh, so that it will be accurate. If sometimes the names are missing with A or something, uh, is, the name is not correct, but the zip code is always it's unique. So it will be used a best use case for do the get the locations part whenever you are plotting a map. I can say. Okay. Uh, there is a uh, one question from B2 Singh. Uh, uh, Divya, this for you. Can I remove action filter from all sheet in single click? Okay, can you remove action filter? Yeah, so if that has been applied to all the sheets, you know, uh, automatically it gets unfiltered. Okay, I think this is okay. Yeah, there's also work around actually, you know, uh, the outcome is going to be something like this. We'll have a filter icon on the dashboard. And let's say we have around four to five filters. So, you know, and users are playing with the filters for, you know, slicing and dicing the data. So once I click on this icon, a filter icon itself, it will automatically remove all those, you know, actions, it will revert back to the default, uh, you know, save option. Okay. So maybe we'll try to you know embed that link also in the follow-up email so that you can go through that. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, Anjit, this question for is for, for you. Uh, can we decrease the color levels, brightness for background image in Tableau? Uh, for an image, uh, you'll have to do it with your design tools. But apart from that, yes, uh, in all other elements, you can do it with uh, Tableau. Uh, that's why I kind of always advise people to have your own hex codes or increase or decrease it within the opacity uh, option in the Tableau, which is great. So these are two ways you can do it. Good. Remaining all like some questions out there. Okay, so uh, so this is for our Bangalore TUG meet team. Uh, how frequent are the Bangalore TUG meetings, and can we have it interactive with the video and audio turned on? Uh, Navin, can you share your screen? Yeah, just a second. Just give me one second. Uh, are you able to see my screen now? Yeah, we can see. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, this is for us, uh, Divya. Like, uh, how frequent are the Bangalore TUG meetings and can we have it interactive with the video and audio turned on? Uh, whenever, uh, so we are planning uh, meetings like every quarter once. And regarding the video and audio, and I don't know, like, most of the people are working from home and they do have their own space. So we'll try, we'll try our level best to get the audio and uh, video turned on. We'll make it more interactive, I can say. Yes, and uh, also to add on, uh, in case if you guys want to, you know, have a, you know, kind of uh, like informal kind of hangout sessions, just get to know the community members and what's happening. Maybe we can have a, you know, different session where we can, you know, it's not going to be a typical presentation. We can actually meet and greet different people from our community. So in case if you're interested in this kind of session, just do let us know. Uh, maybe you can reach out on the, you know, our official Twitter handle or LinkedIn page, or you can reach out to us also directly, and we'll be able to plan this accordingly. Uh, I think uh, one last question for Priyanka. Uh, how long does a project take for you to complete from inception of idea to completion? <laughs> okay. Um, 
I'm actually a very restless person. So if I stick to one idea for long, I might drop it in the middle. So I try getting it done in a week maximum. But usually it's mostly on my Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, it starts late, late Fridays and it ends maximum by Sunday, late night. So, but yeah, it's as early as possible. And that's just like, so no need to rush uh, whenever you are plotting. Uh, so, okay. Take a, like, take an example, like Priyanka yes. is very uh, enthusiastic about tennis. So she does a lot of tennis visualizations uh, because she does know the data very well. And it's up to you. Like if you know the data very well, it will take hardly one hour to complete a visualization. But if you have unknown data, understand the data, get the data, like outliers, each and everything, then plot it. So it's not like time-based. It's mainly like a uh, learning based, I can say. Uh, I think Kaushalya Bharadwaj. Yeah. So do you have any education system? Yeah. So what you can do is there is a Tableau e-learning platform. Uh, you can sign up for that and you can see the like basic starter uh, videos and the quizzes and each and everything will be there. I think uh, I think that's all with Q and A. Uh, over to you, Kizli. Yeah, thanks, I mean. Um, so, thank you all for joining us today. Um, I will just close with a couple of uh, closing remarks. Uh, and first of all, thank you to both our speakers, Priyanka and Anjushri. Uh, Priyanka, thanks for taking us through your investigation project uh, process. Uh, will definitely help uh, all the newcomers, especially who are new to the community, to look at how you go about creating a ways, how you go about creating collecting the data. So thanks for sharing. And Anjushri, uh, that was amazing. The map box uh, kind of mini tutorial you showed. Um, I know map box can be a bit uh, complicated when you start at first. So that would really be helpful for all those who are new to the tool. So thank you for sharing that and your design tips as well. And you can stay connected with us on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, as you can see, our handle on Twitter is at Bangalore TUG. We'll be updating our next sessions uh, on both the platforms and you can sign up in advance for them. So yeah, it's Bangalore TUG on Twitter and we have Bangalore Tableau user group on LinkedIn. So you can join us and on both and um, keep connected. And do share any ideas or uh, any improvements which you have in mind, and we'll definitely take into consideration for the next session. So with that, we'll close the session for today. Thank you to our participants. Uh, thanks, Devya and Naveen, for hosting. And thank you to all the attendees for joining. Um, I know most of us are in the weekend mode already. So thanks for joining. See you next time. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice day, guys. Thank you. Thank you.